Ai's poem Reunions with the Ghost first appeared in 1991. The speaker of the poem is an anonymous woman who tells of her troubled relationship with the man she is in love with. It focuses on a particular incident that begins in disillusionment on the part of the woman, progresses to an act of love making and culminates in what appears to be the couple's final separation. The emotions expressed range from contempt to love, passion, sadness and puzzlement. The poem reveals the difficulty that men and women have in forming a successful intimate partnership. The poem is in the form of one long unrhymed verse paragraph and the diction is largely the language of common speech. Most of it is literal description although there is also some figurative language as when the lovers are compared to stardust tumbling through space. The major cluster of images in the poem comes in the first four lines. The first night God created was too weak. it fell down on its back a woman in a cobalt blue dress i was that woman and i did not die these lines may appear puzzling and they do not permit a definitive explanation the god who creates the first night is presumably an allusion to the book of genesis in which on the first day of creation god separates the light from the darkness calling the light day and the darkness night In the poem the night is too weak falls down and is then metaphorically equated with the woman who is then revealed to be the speaker of the poem the woman falling on her back is an image of sexual surrender as well as symbol weakness perhaps the allusion to god and the first night hints at night as the feminine realm which is overwhelmed by the day world of masculine consciousness but this is not really necessary for an understanding of the poem let's see the summary of the poem the first line of the poem refers to the first night of god's creation being too weak an obscure idea that quickly turns in lines 2 and 3 into a concrete image of a woman in a cobalt blue dress falling on her back line 4 introduces the speaker of the poem for the first time and she reveals that she is the woman referred to in the earlier lines she also says that she survived the fall although what she is referring to is not stated it then becomes apparent that the speaker is addressing someone a man who is her boyfriend lover or husband it is clear that she was at some point in love with him she was prepared to make sacrifices and put his needs above her own apparently she is still doing so since the next line is in the present tense indicating that the relationship is still in existence however the speaker's anger and dissatisfaction with her partner are clear as she accuses him of not caring about whatever sacrifices she makes for him then she complains that he is drunk again which appears to be a common occurrence and is lost in a world of his own turned in on himself in line 8 the speaker summarizes the way her lover complains about his own life he believes that no one's troubles are as bad as his own apparently to demonstrate his misfortune he unzips his pants to show her the scar on his thigh the scar is a visible reminder of the injury he received when he was hit by a train at the age of 10 the man talks about the incident with wonder but also with a contempt that is aimed at himself he feels guilty because he was not killed in the accident he thinks he deserved to die the speaker of the poem kneels and touches the scar as the man stands in front of her with his eyes closed his pants and underwear are now at his ankles The woman slides his hand up his thigh and touches the scar. This is a sexual overture. The man shivers and grabs her by the hair. They kiss and make passionate love on the floor, though the speaker comments that metaphorically speaking they never touch the floor. It is as if they are borne aloft by the ecstasy of the love making. When their sexual intercourse is over, the speaker says that nothing has changed between them, and she wonders 
about the nature of their relationship which seems to puzzle her is it love or friendship that pins us down until we give in she seems to be asking what is it that continually draws them together in a sexual relationship whatever union and intimacy they gain during sex does not last the speaker says afterwards they quickly retreat to the safety of their own separate lives in line 35 the woman says that her lover is now sober once more following the sex he dresses and sits watching her putting on her makeup they go outside and kiss goodbye the man departs carrying whatever it is that haunts him and makes his life turbulent the speaker reflects that she has once more endured the ordeal of loving by which she seems to mean not sex but the intimacy of relationship she feels sane and wise as she watches her lover walk off then he turns back and she sees in his eyes a look of acceptance and recognition he appears to be certain that they will meet again from time to time although the word the speaker gives to him is not meet but collide this suggests that he is aware that any encounter between them whether sexual or otherwise is going to be stormy but it appears that the speaker has something else in mind the emphatic repetition of s s regarding the farewell she gave him suggests that she meant this as a final parting even though he appears to believe something else the main theme of the poem is the failure of love the title hints at the story that unfolds much of which is not stated explicitly but lies under the surface reunions suggest that in the relationship between this couple there is a pattern of partings and reunions the word ghost possibly refers to the man who is only a ghost of what the woman once thought him to be ghost may also refer to be the relationship itself which is just a shadow of what it once was and continues in spite of the fact that at least from the woman's point of view there is no rational for its continued existence perhaps the theme might also be described as the hostility of intimacy since although the word love is used it does not seem to characterize the relationship at least as it exists in the time frame in which the poem takes place the woman seems to have only contempt for her drunken complaining lover with his self pitying attitude and his demand for sympathy however she does show love in one particular gesture and that is when she touches the scar that for the man is the visible sign of the fact that the world has not dealt with him fairly this is an act of acceptance on the part of the woman it seems to say that she accepts him for what he is and perhaps by doing that she seeks to make him whole once more for there is no doubt that she loved him once since she says as much as she touches the scar he is shivers as if she has indeed touched a vital core of him she has reached him where his pain lies deepest the man is obviously a wounded personality riddled with guilt over something that happened in his childhood that was probably not his fault and over which she had no control no doubt that the guilt deeply embedded in him giving him low self esteem and chronic insecurity but the impression the poem gives is that this gesture of touching the scar is something of ritual between them he winds about his circumstances she comforts consoles and touches they make love and all is healed for a short while but then the troubles start again This is certainly what happens in the sexual act described in the poem. Sex is just an escape, a temporary mask that covers the sadness at the heart of this relationship, which has reached a point at which it cannot continue any longer. At least the physical act of sex provides some temporary acceleration for this troubled couple, freeing them from their usual boundaries. But even in this there is disappointment. the two bits of stardust an image that suggests that their copulation is lifting them into some exalted cosmic realm is immediately undercut by the phrase shed no light the mechanical nature of the act becomes apparent in the impersonal it is finished as if an involuntary physical spasm or process has simply played itself out the description of the sexual act as well as the prelude to it suggests that it is not an out- 
growth of a healthy love relationship but something indulged in out of habit and necessity the intimacy it provides is illusory it changes nothing as a woman explicitly states nothing is different nothing this is also obliquely suggested in the previous line our descent our falling in place which describes the end of their love making the phrase falling in place puts in mind running in place an activity in which a person may expend a lot of energy but not actually go anywhere the retreat into private separate selfhood that follows is simply the final nail in the coffin all that remains to be said after this final failure of intimacy is goodbye but even in that simple act this couple cannot communicate although the woman is clear in her own mind that she meant it when she said goodbye the man appears certain that there will be more meetings more collisions between them